Good morning. Since last year, a team of fellows comprising uh, Dr. Monette Serafica, Dr. Vic Paqueo, Dr. David Cerveta, and myself, together with two leading computer scientists uh, from De La Salle University, uh, Dr. Alvin Kulaba and Elmer Davios, have uh, under, been undertaking a scoping study on the fourth industrial revolution, which we call fire. This morning, I've been tasked by the team to discuss with you the challenges and opportunities facing us in the wake of the fire. And as shown in this outline, okay, um, I will be describing the fire and then discuss the likely effects of frontier technologies before I zero in on preparations we need to make for opportunities and challenges ahead. The Philippines, has had its share of booms and busts, with the economy getting hit not only from internal political events, but also regional shocks from you know, way back. No? Um, but since 2012, the economy has had a new trajectory, with performance going better than the average performance in the whole of East Asia, and even the entire world. 10 years after the global financial and economic crisis of 2008, we may be wondering where exactly are we heading, and many in the business community actually have a very positive outlook about the world economy because of the emerging fire. Historians of science have pointed out that we have had many developments, especially in technology, that have signaled new ways of living starting with the invention of fire, the, the real fire. The development of agriculture, the use of the wheel, the rise of cities, and the development of manufacturing and trade. In the case of, in the industrial product, of industrial production, there have been three significant periods when we have improved industry by migrating from established production methods to utilizing cutting edge technologies. First, we use steam and water power, then we use electricity and assembly lines, then starting more or less in the 1970s, we had the third industrial revolution, which involved computerization. Now, 50 years later, we live in the era of the fire. What makes this a revolution is not the technologies themselves, because these techs, robots, computers, wireless connectivity, or digital platforms, have been there for quite some time. What makes this moment special is that we are getting to use these technologies to interact with each other in a way that we have never done before. Klaus Schwab, the founder and executive chairman of the World Economic Forum, says this period is fusing the physical, digital, and biological worlds. While there is no universally agreed definition of fire technologies that are um, frontier technologies that are part of the fire, Commonly, we identify 3D printing, Internet of Things, artificial intelligence or AI, and robotics. 3D printers can be used to make a transplantable organ in a process called bioprinting. 3D printer technology lets us produce not only body parts, but also engine parts, cars, houses, and more. Internet of Things, or IoT, is about devices connected to the internet, about trillions of sensors communicating with these devices and with one another. The connected devices, working with the sensors, monitor things like building elevators, checking them for current status and possible problems. Even more, they use artificial intelligence, or AI, to predict failures before they actually happen. There are also rapid advancements in robotics, and that lead to big changes in building cars and even assisting in surgery. AI actually works to power a variety of applications from driverless cars and robots to voice assistants and shopping bots. And to get even more specific, the autocomplete feature on your smartphones, AI powers that. So with the recommendations we get from websites when we buy clothing, music, or household goods from the internet. So with the ability to recognize your face in a photo, in Instagram or Facebook, or the facial recognition in your iPhone X. All that is powered by AI. 
Due to time constraints, I won't go through a description of all of these frontier technologies. I have prepared, however, uh, quite a number of videos, and maybe I should be working on uh, showing you one of them. Uh, just show you maybe this one. This is an example of AI being given by uh, uh, Google CEO on Google Assistant. Let's say you want to ask Google to make you a haircut appointment. So what you're going to hear is the Google Assistant actually calling a real salon to schedule the appointment for you.
next few years to come. At this moment, many of the technologies people dreamed of in the 1950s and 60s have become a reality. Of course, we don't still have flying cars, but we are testing driverless cars in many cities across the world, including our next door neighbor, Singapore. And we have got robots, plus there's genetic sequencing and editing, artificial intelligence, miniaturized sensors, 3D printing, internet of things, big data, blockchain, nanotechnologies, to name a few. The fire frontier technologies can, however, yield uncertainties and risks in their use. The late physicist Stephen Hawking suggested that AI provides an existential threat to humanity. Nobel laureate Joseph Stiglitz warns that the current inequalities existing in society will become even larger as a result of the fire. And with every use of technology, we should realize there's some personal intrusion happening, affecting our privacy. However, technology will also affect jobs, but in, in maybe three kinds of ways. One is technology replacing human labor. Second, new jobs being created because of technology. And third, jobs being complemented by technology. But how this is all going to play out is still anybody's guess. A recent study of the ILO suggests that nearly half of our wage workers are at high risk of getting affected. More women than men, and regarding BPOs, even as much as nine out of 10 workers at high risk of getting affected from automation. Repetitive tasks, sorry, repetitive tasks can be programmed into computers, and what is now codifiable today may be codifiable tomorrow, especially with AI. People at the lower skill spectrum doing relatively high shares of routine tasks in their jobs are the people that are highly, are, that are highly at risk of getting affected. Of course, high risk doesn't mean they will lose their jobs, just like bank tellers in the 1990s and ATMs were invented. But at the very least, the nature of their work will change with repetitive tasks being taken away. Disruptions in business models can trigger selective reshoring, nearshoring, and other structural change to the global value change. What this means for workers is both good news and bad news. Good news because technical, technological advances will create new jobs, but it also means bad news because these new jobs are going to be different from the jobs that have been misplaced and they require workers to learn some new skills. MIT professor David Autor argues that the extent of machine substitution for human labor might be overstated. Although computers substitute for workers in performing routine tasks, they can also amplify the comparative advantage of workers in supplying problem solving skills, adaptability, and creativity. He adds, however, that even if automation doesn't reduce the quantity of jobs, it may affect the qualities of jobs that are available. This means that human capital investments are crucial and forms the core of any long-term strategy for producing future skills. Various emerging technologies in biotech, digital tech, nanotech, neurotech are likely to offer exciting opportunities as well as risks, given that these technologies are disruptive and also even get into boundaries about what, um, about what we change, as there may be no reset button, like control out delete. Frontier technologies of the fire can potentially solve many problems in making growth and development more inclusive and sustainable, from attaining food security to improving the quality of healthcare to caring better for the planet. These concerns are part of the global aspirations to reach the Sustainable Development Goals by 2030. And even in the Philippines, we have had our long-term aspirations articulated in Ambition 2040. But since this, there are uncertainties in, in the future because of the fire, we need to look at our preparedness and identify what steps we should take to make our economy more resilient to risks, to make our citizenry flexible for the jobs of the future, as well as to provide social protection to those who may not be able to adjust as easily. 
The World Economic Forum has started an assessment of the level of preparedness of 100 countries, looking into various aspects of current structures of production, as well as the drivers of production. Seven ASEAN countries included in the uh, assessment are spread across three different archetypes. Leading include Malaysia and Singapore, legacy include Philippines and Thailand, and nascent include Cambodia, Indonesia, and Vietnam. Countries like Singapore and Malaysia, together with China and several rich economies, have been assessed as leading, and rightly so because of prior investments in the innovation ecosystem. As a legacy country, the Philippines is found to have a strong production base, but it is at risk for the future due to weaker performance across drivers of production, which include technology and innovation, human capital, global trade and investment, institutional framework, sustainable resources, and the demand environment. Many of our ASEAN neighbors have built their industry and digital technology roadmaps. Singapore in particular even has an industry transformation program, a concept of what it means to be a smart or intelligent nation. The Philippines has its own set of policy frameworks promoting manufacturing, as well as advancing ICT and innovation. Government through DTI has upgraded its industrial roadmap into IQPES, Inclusive Innovation-Led Industrial Strategy. Government through DICT is developing a successor to the digital strategy and implementing a national uh, broadband plan and an e-government master plan. But how should government operate in this new emerging landscape? Borrowing an analogy articulated in a report of the World Bank on innovation, the government should be like a good gardener that prepares the ground, fertilizes the soil, waters the plant, and removes weeds and pests. As regards preparing the ground, the World Economic Forum lists and describes three future skills required. Foundational literacies, competencies, and character qualities. Skills and competencies should be like Lego blocks, which can be used to create different figures for, with the same building blocks. Learners should not only be given technical, but also soft skills. In the Philippines, we have, had, we have introduced K-12, which has provided us a mechanism to radically change basic education. But are these changes enough to prepare our future workforce for the jobs of the future? As far as research and development is concerned, our 2015 survey of innovation activities conducted by PIDS suggests that two out of every five firms innovate, but the proportion of innovators among large firms is higher than that of MSMEs. Thus, much has to be done to enhance the innovation ecosystem, including increasing our spending for R&D. Of course, we've been increasing R&D expenditure slightly in the past years, but this spending is still at less than a fifth of 1% of GDP, which is below the 1% benchmark recommended by UNESCO. In recent years, the innovation ecosystem has been getting increased support. As mentioned earlier, we have had an upgraded industry roadmap developed by DTI, DDOST, and CHET. And DOST is also managing to get support for several major programs, including the Science for Change program, the Public Scientist 2.0 program, and its budget setup. Our newly established DICT is also working vigorously in addressing issues on coverage, price, and quality of internet to ensure that div digital dividends are leveraged better and made more inclusive. But how do we maximize the impact of all of these many initiatives? Are all of these efforts well coordinated or are there duplications that can potentially be put to better use elsewhere? Further, even if we keep spending much more on R&D, do we have enough absorptive capacity? Are, there, are the complementary factors for innovation present? Removing weeds and pests is probably one of the role that government has neglected the most given the significant restrictions to trade and industry as compared to other countries in the region and globally. To hasten technology transfer and diffusion, there's an urgent need to remove barriers
barriers, including burdensome regulations and procedures, which add to the cost of doing business. The current pr procurement process should likewise be reformed to facilitate the work of those undertaking R&D in or on behalf of government. The existing procurement system was designed to minimize corruption and increase transparency and accountability in government transactions. But it has also made it difficult for government agencies to procure external knowledge, technology, and other goods and services which are needed for innovation activities. Regulators should also be able to adapt to the emergence of new technologies, products, and business models. The regulatory sandbox approach used by many monetary authorities in Singapore, Malaysia, and the UK when working with fintech services could provide useful lessons for our industry regulators. Various government agencies could play a role in creating an enabling environment that fosters technological upgrading and innovation. While each has its own mandate, they need to work in unison to reduce duplication of efforts and resources, as well as ensure that they do not work at cross purposes. Thus, a whole of government approach is necessary to prepare the Philippines for the fourth industrial revolution, which is unleashing a new level of productivity and augmenting our lives in many ways, but it can also possibly dislocate people from jobs. Some people may either lack the ability or the interest to reach creative potentials and will thus require social protection. However, unfortunately now many of us in the middle and upper income classes are not very sympathetic to constraints faced by the low income classes and would rather have the government spend on such entitlements such as free college education. Increasing social protection to anticipate possible widening inequalities entails having political will to battle the sense of entitlement of those who do not need social assistance, as well as working on progressive universalism, which emphasizes expansion and coverage of social protection to vulnerable classes, but prioritizing those in need of more help. We should also be revamping, revamping pension models in line with new realities of work and aging. Further, social, uh, so social security benefits need to be portable so that people don't experience loss of contributions and benefits from moving from one job to another or even from one country to another. If all of these will increase increasing public spending and uh, this could be borne by increased collection of property taxes, or generating taxes on sugar, tobacco, and alcohol, as we have already done, but not, unfortunately, for the purposes of the fire. We could also institute subsidy reforms, reduce tax avoidance, especially firms and people engaged in digital trade, which, by the way, has not been yet measured effectively. This effort to prepare the country requires all stakeholders, governments, the government, civil society, private sector, as well as the media to work together to steer emerging technologies in ways that limit risks and create a Philippines that aligns with common goals for the future. And this is why we at PIDS are focusing our discussions during our fourth annual public policy conference this, December, this September, as well as in, in many of our activities for the month on preparations for the fourth industrial revolution. We don't yet have a crystal ball that will tell us definitively how fast and to what extent robots and AI will replace humans. We cannot provide clear links yet between the ways in which society responds to AI and the future pace of innovation. But we can provide a framework for assessing alternative possibilities and policies, a rough guide to the likely consequences of the fire so that we can have a whole of nation understanding what is to come and have a whole of nation action agenda to improve our readiness for the future so that whatever great divides we have currently will not become wider. Magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. We will now be showing you a, a video that we will be playing regularly. Globally, We've seen how nations strive to keep up with the digital world. Hong Kong has recently launched its humanoid robot named Sophia. Hello everyone. It's been a really exciting year for me. In the United States, cars are already driving on their own. In the Philippines, technology. 
technological innovations are being developed by local scientists and are being adopted by Philippine industry. This is the fourth industrial revolution, an era of advanced technological breakthroughs. The fourth industrial revolution is reshaping the way people live, work, and communicate. From purchasing goods online, even with smart glasses, to boosting productivity of businesses, discovering new ways to provide better health care with 3D printed organs, to enhancing food security using robots and drones for precise spraying of herbicides. While the rise of this revolution provides new jobs and business opportunities, some jobs may be displaced. The International Labor Organization predicts that about half of jobs in five Southeast Asian countries are at high risk of being affected by automation. Jobs that are at risk are those that involve much repetition and less creativity. To prepare us for the risk of job losses and a likely rise in inequality, we must all understand the changing landscape and do our share in making our current and future workforce flexible for the emerging job market. We must also provide protection for those who may not be capable to adjust to changes. The government should be able to strengthen social protection, provide flexible social safety nets, and promote labor policies that will reduce workers' exposure to risk. It should likewise introduce a robust program on emerging technologies such as putting more investment in research and development, increasing the pool of scientists and engineers, and providing better incentives for innovation. Given the changing technological landscape, the government also needs to rethink its regulatory framework. It should make it more open, flexible, and less burdensome for new businesses and investments. Meanwhile, the business sector should assist its workers adapt to the demands of modern technologies through retraining, on-the-job training, and mentoring and coaching programs. Both the government and the private sector should work together to create an environment that fosters and embraces innovation. The entire educational system also has an important role to play by mainstreaming digital skills in basic education, developing and promoting courses in science, technology, and mathematics and incorporating both cognitive and non-cognitive skill development in their curriculum. The government, business sector, schools and workers have a stake in harnessing the fourth industrial revolution. Given that this revolution demands attention, we made it the central theme of this year's Development Policy Research Month, or DPRA. Every September, the Philippine Institute for Development Studies leads the entire nation in celebrating the DPRM. To emphasize the importance of policy research and the formulation of appropriate policy interventions to emerging and current development concerns. Its main and culminating activity is the Annual Public Policy Conference, or APPC, which convenes and engages policy analysts, social scientists, and representatives from government and the private sector in a rational and evidence-based discussion of issues, opportunities, and policy options. Through this year's APPC, which carries the theme, Harnessing the Fourth Industrial Revolution, Creating Our Future Today, we aim to encourage everyone to be proactive in preparing for and adapting to the changes that come along with today's digital transformations. The fourth industrial revolution is here. Let us use it to our advantage.